around the 80s, right, around in Marcy Projects in Brooklyn, which is a really tough neighborhood. And that was like, for the first time, we had the whole neighborhood got hit with a big crack ep- epidemic. You had a real messed up childhood. Uh, I, would- I had an odd childhood. It was a lot more messed up than I, than I thought, apparently, according to the, to the team of doctors. Wow. Would that be you in the van? That's me, and that's, that- that's literally the script that got me out of Maui. When you think of a celebrity, it's more than likely you assume they have a lot of money. And you wouldn't be wrong as most celebrities do find a way to secure the bag. Whether it be through sponsorships and brand deals or using whatever it was that got them to the point that they became a celebrity, odds are, if you're a celebrity, you're rich. Now as we know, there are numerous celebrities who went broke after fame and fortune. But we're not here to talk about people who made bad choices. Instead, we're actually going to be talking about those who made good choices. Today on Inform Overload, we'll be counting down the top 10 celebrities that had humble beginnings. What's going on guys? Welcome to IO. I'm your host, Jared Bronstein, and today we're talking about one of my favorite things, rags to riches stories. Not to discredit anyone who hasn't had a tough upbringing, but for me personally, reading and learning about how some of the world's most influential and successful people came from next to nothing, well, it fires me up. And I mean that in a good way. Very inspiring. As always, guys, stick around to the very end for some comment replies, and let us know your thoughts on this video in the comments down below. For now, I say we jump right into it. At number 10, Chris Pratt. Before Pratt would be starring in Marvel films and making people all over the world laugh while portraying Andy in Parks and Recreation, he lived out of his van. Pratt would drop out of college after spending less than a semester there. He would try his hand working as a discount salesman and at one point stripping. At 19, his friend offered him a one-way ticket to Maui, Hawaii, where Pratt would spend most of his days living by the beach, out of his van, working jobs to get enough money for food, gas, and weed. Sounds ideal to me. Speaking with Independent in 2014, he said, I quote, it would be different if I lived on the streets of Chicago and ate garbage from a dumpster. We just drank and smoked weed and worked minimal hours, 15 to 20 hours per week, just enough to cover gas, food, and fishing supplies. You know, it was a charming time. However, his life would turn around while waiting tables at Bubba Gump's Shrimp Company, where he just so happened to serve actor and director Ray Don Chong. Chong would go on to cast Pratt in her directorial debut, only after Pratt told her how he always wanted to act. Ah. If only it was that easy for us all. At number nine, Ed Sheeran. You've likely all seen the photo of Sheeran performing on the streets, or busking as they say, being compared to him on stage with a guitar and thousands of filled arena seats. It's no secret that Ed didn't come from much, but many were surprised to find out just a few years before he'd be going on world tours and selling out stadiums, the man didn't even have a place to live. In his book, A Visual Journey, Sheeran explained, I quote, there was an arch outside Buckingham Palace that has a heating duct and I spent a couple of nights there. I didn't have anywhere to live for much of 2008 and the whole of 2009 and 2010, but somehow I made it work. I knew where I could get a bed at a certain time of night, and I knew who I could call at any time to get a floor to sleep on. Being sociable helped. Drinking helped. I spent a week catching up on sleep on Circle Line trains. I'd go out and play a gig, wait until 5 a.m. when the underground opened, sleep on the Circle Line until 12, go to a session, and then repeat. It wasn't that bad. Moving on to number eight, Nicki Minaj. Originally from Trinidad and Tobago, Nicki would move to New York when she was just five years old. Although her parents were hoping to get a steady job so they could take care of Nicki and her siblings, unfortunately addiction got the best of her father. It got to the point that Nicki's mother would need to provide for the family, who was already struggling to get by, while her father would do what he could to support his habit. At one point, this meant selling some of the family's furniture. At another point in her life, Nicki's father actually burned down their childhood house after an argument with his wife. This led to Nicki working various jobs, and as she recalls, she's been fired from at least 50 Still with big goals in mind, Nicki would find a way to overcome the odds and is now considered one of the most influential females in hip-hop history. At number 7, Shania Twain. Her childhood was incredibly difficult because it not only involved tragedy, but abuse as well as some unexpected pressure. From a young age, Shania would have to witness her mother being the victim of abuse at the hands of her stepfather. At one point, Shania watched as her stepfather shoved her mother's head into a toilet, leading her to lose consciousness. For a short period of time, Shania thought she'd never see her mother again. Her stepfather also verbally abused her, but at times was the nicest man, which led to Shania referencing him to Jekyll and Hyde. The main reason for the arguments was because money was incredibly tight. This led to Shania performing in clubs from an incredibly young age, hoping to make tips to help support the family. Unfortunately, Shania's parents would die in a car accident, leaving a young Shania to support her younger siblings. Still, through hard work and perseverance, she's been able to go on to do some incredible things in her life. At 6, Eminem. If you've seen 8 Mile, you likely know Eminem's story, or if you've listened to some of his music, you'd also know he didn't have such an easy go at life. Never knowing his father, growing up with a drug addicted mother who couldn't hold down a job, M moved a lot as a kid. This not only led him not having many friends and keeping to himself, but as you can imagine, he also got bullied a lot. M would eventually drop out of the ninth grade at 17 years old after failing three times, and around this time would also be kicked out of his house by his mother. Although in his songs, Eminem has claimed his mother was physically and verbally abusive and wasn't much of a mother at all, she has denied the claims and at one point tried to sue him for 10 million worth of damages, which they settled for 25,000. Either way, as we know, Eminem has gone on to do great things and is usually in discussion when speaking about some of the best rappers of all time. 
At number 5, Sylvester Stallone. Before he was starring in Rocky, Stallone was sleeping in bus terminals and at one point took a risque short film. As he put it, I quote, it was either do that movie or rob someone because I was at the end. The very end of my rope. As a struggling actor, Stallone would be evicted from his New York apartment which would lead to him living on the streets for a few days. He then found shelter at a New York bus terminal where he lived for approximately 3 weeks before seeing a cast he noticed for the film, The Party at Kitty and Studs. Stallone was paid 100 bucks a day for the softcore flick and to him, 2 days work at 100 bucks a day was a miracle. As we know, he'd go on to write the screenplay for Rocky and even while struggling would turn down offers to produce the film due to the fact that the executives wanted to cast a celebrity as the lead. Stallone wasn't going to make the film unless he was able to portray Rocky. Clearly it worked out. Moving on to number 4, Jay Z. Yet another musician who if you listen to his lyrics, well you likely know all about his rough upbringing. Growing up in the Marcy projects of New York, Jay Z has admitted through both his lyrics and during interviews that he sold drugs as a kid to support himself and the family. In a 2013 interview with Vanity Fair, Jay explained, I quote, I know about budgets. I was a drug dealer. To be in a drug deal, you need to know what you could spend, what you need to re-up. Or if you want to start some sort of barbershop or car wash, those were the businesses back then. Things you could get in easily to get out of that life. At some point, you have to have an exit strategy because your window is very small. You're going to get locked up or you're going to die. As we know, Jay-Z would go on to become a mogul with his own record label, clothing line. At one point, he even owned a basketball team. Now at number 3, Kevin Hart. Growing up in Philadelphia, shout out Philly, Hart was raised in a single parent household. His mother would work to provide for the family, while his father would spend most of his days in jail or on the streets trying to feed his drug addiction. The absence of his father and the struggles his family endured, in general, actually led to Kevin pursuing comedy as it was his way of coping with reality. But even when Kevin first got on stage, things weren't easy for the guy. He was booed off stage at the start of his career, and at one point, someone actually threw a piece of chicken at him. But the guy never gave up and is now one of Hollywood's biggest and most profitable stars, who also sells out arenas during his comedy tours, has his own Netflix series about his life, and is overall just living his best life. And at number two, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Does anybody still call him that? Is it just Dwayne Johnson? Is it just The Rock? I never know. I'm, he's always gonna be The Rock to me. I just grew up watching wrestling, so sorry, just deal with it, I guess. You've likely heard it or read the quote somewhere, but it was Dwayne Johnson who said, I quote, In 1995, I had seven bucks in my pocket and I knew two things. I'm broke as hell and one day I won't be. However, there's much more to the story than a football player turned wrestler turned one of Hollywood's biggest stars. From a young age, Johnson's family would struggle and at one point, while he was living in Hawaii, Dwayne joined a theft ring to help support the family. At 14 when he got evicted from his apartment, Johnson explained he would target tourists with a group of people who preyed on the unsuspecting victims. I quote him saying, There are a lot of tourists that come into Waikiki and there's a lot of money. A lot of foreign money that comes in and we were part of a theft ring that would target those groups. We would target the money, we would target the high end clothes, and we would target the jewelry. Turn around and sell it, best we could. Yet it turns out this wasn't a life Johnson wanted, admitting, I quote, I got arrested 8 or 9 times, I think by the time I was 17. Now in at number 1, Jim Carrey. I grew up watching this guy on the big screen from The Mask to Ace Ventura, liar liar, I mean this guy was literally in every kid's comedy. But prior to his incredibly successful career in Hollywood, Carrey would spend his youth working 8 hour days as a janitor or security guard, and at one point also lived out of a van. When Jim's father lost his accounting job at 51, the family had an incredibly difficult time providing. This led to Jim and his brother working alongside their father after school at a tire factory. When Jim was 16, he would officially drop out of school, and around this time he would start living out of his family's Volkswagen van on campgrounds or anywhere they could park. However, this decision would lead to Jim's father taking him to comedy clubs, which in turn eventually led to Jim gracing the stage himself, and the rest is history. That's all for this one guys, let me know your thoughts down below. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. James Charles responds to Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson drama. Maggie's art said Jeffree and Shane literally almost made James kill himself. He didn't even address that and now he's deflecting. He shouldn't even be on this platform. I'll be honest, I don't know too much about it. I don't look too much into the whole drama regarding the whole beauty stuff on YouTube. From what I have seen, it seems like people have tried to cancel Shane Dawson many times for his controversial past. Same thing with Jeffree Star. I just don't understand why it's like people cancel him, then he still gets a bunch of support, and then it's like people forget that he was canceled, and they cancel him again. I don't, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about it, but again, based on what seems that's happening now, like he just doesn't seem like the best guy. Is all I'm gonna say. I, I can't say for sure. I don't know him personally, but from what I can tell uh, regarding the whole situation, it just seems a little people were just a little like money hungry, maybe, and they just wanted the views. Unfortunately, Kathy Smith said the beauty community is crazy. Again, I don't. I'm not too too into it, but it it seems pretty crazy. It seems there's a lot more drama in the beauty community than any other community on YouTube, at least that I see. Kerry Brian Miller said, "I'm glad James defended himself. After all he's been through, he deserves to be happy. I think everybody deserves to be happy. At the end of the day, I think everyone deserves to be happy. I think some people make choices that maybe." doesn't lead them to happiness. Uh, nothing to do with James' situation, I'm just saying in general. Some people just make bad choices and then it leads to them not being happy. But I think everybody deserves to be happy to a certain extent. Anyways guys, that's it for this one. Been your host Jared Bronstein and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! After Pratt would drop out of college after spending less than a month 
After Pratt would drop out of college after spending less, mm, Pratt would drop out of college after spending less than a month. I don't know why I'm saying month. We just drank and smoked weed and worked minimum. We just drank and smoked weed and, and we just drank and smoked weed and worked minimal. Mm, I can't. It's just not 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 my day. Crazy, huh? He's like one of the biggest musicians in the world now. It's it's insane. At number six, eight miles. Or if you've listened. I think you said at number six, eight miles. Is that what I said? Carrie Brian Miller said, I'm glad James defended himself after all. He's been through. Oh, okay, you meant to write through, you put throw. It's okay, Carrie. 